not a call you get every day. We've just been called out to a dog that's been stuck in a fence. Now, it's apparently been there for a little while. Police rescue at the scene, just trying to get it out. A neighbour tipped off police about the emergency. So he's trying to jump through these things here. Yep. Um, it's about a mess, that's all his blood. He's been hanging there for a while. Do we know who this is? This is Woody. Woody, OK. This is incredible. Woody's been hanging at the window by his back legs. To me, it looks like he's tried to escape and actually got stuck by his back legs. Now, if the police didn't arrive when they did, Woody would be dead. So the front way's out? Yeah, front way's out. Where was he yeah. stuck about? So, still on here. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. I'll get to those in a second. I just want to check out the front half here. In Woody's desperation to get out that window, he's worn down pretty much his entire dew claw. And that's where all that blood's come from. But to do that sort of damage, he must have been hanging there for hours. Oh, Woody, what have you done to yourself, buddy? Chris is concerned Woody may have suffered brain damage from hanging upside down for so long. He may have other internal injuries as well, which we don't know about yet. A steroid injection is administered to help boost Woody's blood pressure. I really hope this works. If we can't manage to get more blood back to Woody's heart, his whole circulation is going to collapse. I hate to say it, if that happens, he just won't make it. A distressed seven-month-old golden retriever has been rushed into the Bondi Referral Hospital, Sash. Danny is struggling to walk and breathe. He came in here when he was about eight weeks old. He was bitten by a tick and almost died. He was on a ventilator for four days. And we were so worried he wasn't going to make it and we all became so attached to him and I'm just so worried about him being back here so soon. This time, owners David and Rosaline are convinced a plastic object is stuck in Danny's throat. Okay. Oh, sweetheart. He had a feel and he said it's something... a long plastic. <laughs> if Mr Lamb hadn't felt something stuck in Danny's throat, then I would be absolutely certain that he's got a paralysis tick. Okay. That's good next, right? Danny's just a baby and it's cruel that he has to go through something like this again. So when we moved down in, he was actually hanging completely out of the window quite by his hind legs. Um, Police rescue's actually cut, had to cut the bars out. And he's been like this the whole time since we've been here. Woody's shocked owner Shannon arrives home to find his best friend fighting for life. Oh my god. I imagine he's been hanging upside down for quite a while too, which is going to yeah. play around with his circulation. The steroid injection has helped boost Woody's blood pressure and his circulation is beginning to stabilise. So his legs are OK? Well, his left foreleg is a bit stiff and you can see he's holding oh, no, up. No, 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 that, that uh, you got hit by a car too, yeah. Uh, that explains that. No one had me worried. Shannon's telling me this story about how Woody lost the use of his leg two years ago in a car accident. Yeah. And I'm here thinking, how much bad luck can one dog have? But I'm just hoping Woody's got enough strength to pull himself through this time too. Yeah, OK. Do you normally a good guard dog? No, not at all. He's not a guard dog at all. See, Woody help us. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely in shock and, and horrified. I just... Uh, he's part of the family. I mean, we all love him. I don't know what's going to happen. I just don't know what's going to happen. I'm just checking for internal bleeding. That's fine. Chris clears Woody of internal bleeding, but brain damage could still be an issue. Yeah, the pupil is is responding to that. Now, that's showing that he is at least detecting light. So he's not only making out light, he's also making out shapes and, and movement, which is good. So just to counter that dehydration, we're going to run this bag of fluids yep. into his circulation, not too quickly, otherwise we might overwhelm it again. I really need to check out whether he's fractured those, those yeah. femurs or, yeah, dislocated his hips. At this stage, the plan is to take him back to the, the vets. Oh, man. There you go, buddy. 
poor Woody, he's in so much pain. And all I'm thinking is, just hang on, mate, just hang on. It's all right, mate. It's okay. Been through a lot, mate, I know. Danny's choking is getting worse. His owners believe he swallowed a plastic object, but Lisa fears he's been bitten by a paralysis tick. I have to take this just to, for their peace of mind because they said they saw something in his mouth. Oh, it looks pretty good. X-rays show Danny has nothing wedged in his larynx. It all looks normal. Oh, right. So, you won't believe what I'm going to tell you, but I think that he's probably got a tick again. Again? What a tick does is it paralyzes parts of the body. So they have a toxin that they release into the bloodstream when they latch on, and that causes paralysis. And it can affect anything from the back legs to the upper airways to the breathing muscles. Potentially, one bite from a tick on a susceptible dog can cause death. Chris is rushing Woody back to the Bondi clinic. The dog was found hanging upside down out of a window. Yeah, strung up on that table there. X-rays will show if the dog has sustained internal injuries or serious fractures. X-ray. The reason I'm taking so many X-rays is that I need to be absolutely sure that Woody's OK. A normal dog might be able to handle the long-term effects of a broken leg or dislocated hips, but Woody's only got three legs. He can't afford to lose any more mobility. If the results of these X-rays are bad, you'd have to question his quality of life. Hardest part of the night, what are you promising, mate? No, your dog's lucky. Nothing? His hips are in place. No fractures of the femurs. His kneecaps are sitting perfectly. Woody's ordeal is almost over. <laughs> Sorry about that, Woody. I guess it's only now when you get a chance to actually breathe that you realise just what Woody's been through tonight. It's all, buddy. It's OK, mate. Do what's comfortable, mate. Oh, there you go. He must have just been so close to death when that neighbour saw him, and thank God they did, and they made the call, and we got him out. Incredible night. Don't take on those bars, all right? Definitely don't fit through those. Lisa is searching Danny for potentially fatal paralysis ticks. Danny has deteriorated rapidly since he arrived. I mean, he's becoming more wobbly. He's lost his ability to swallow. Look at that, that's so different now. Within minutes, a tick crater is found on Danny's cheek. Looks like a crater. It does. And the fact that it's on his head and he's got these signs yep. of gagging, it, it would all fit in. <laughs> Lisa is now convinced of her diagnosis and immediately gives Danny the anti-serum to try and stop the toxin spreading through his body. Danny boy. So we're going to run the anti-serum in before we even look for more ticks because I don't want him to deteriorate any more than he already has. There we go. The sedation has really kicked in quite nicely. The search now begins for any more lethal paralysis ticks that might be buried in Danny's fur. 
you found anything? Here's one. This is a tiny tick. I mean, they can get to four times the size of this easily, but such a small thing can be deadly to a dog. A tick dip is being given as an extra precaution. It's a good laugh. Danny will need to be monitored around the clock to make sure there's no life-threatening relapse. I just hope we've got it early enough that he doesn't have to go on a ventilator because that would just be awful. Woody looks so much better this morning. You gonna get up? Considering he spent two hours hanging upside down out of a window, his progress is just remarkable. But I'm not gonna be totally comfortable unless he has another 24 hours under observation in here, just to be sure. Come on, little Jeffrey. Come on. It's midday and the clinic closes for lunch. Vet student Laura has let the kittens run amok. All of them are in the adoption program and looking for new homes. This one's Bradley. Hello, Bradley. Hello, Chris speaking. But in the middle of the mayhem, there's an SOS call for Chris from the Australian Reptile Park. A bit of a favour to us. We've got a gator here called Alfie who's potentially swallowed a bottle. So, any chance of you coming up today? What's, what's going on? Well, we've got Alfie, uh, our American alligator, or one of. Uh, we had a visitor come up and say that he had a plastic bottle in his mouth, they thought. Mm. We come down a few minutes later yep. and there's no bottle. The worry is if he swallowed it, it's gone into his stomach, and if it pushes through to, into his intestine, then it'll cause a blockage. From there, it can actually be fatal very quickly. So it's a bit of a race against time to get in there, if it is in there, and actually remove it. This is all... Um, well and good, Tim, but can you tell me why I've got the little ones? Yeah, well, they're the, they're the beginner sticks. It looks like a cricket stump. I'm going into battle with an alligator with a cricket stump. It's good to remind me of that, Tim. Thank you. Chris is at the Australian Reptile Park to investigate if Elfie the gator has swallowed a plastic bottle. He's right there before. If he has, they must act fast. So we walk in and Alfie's not there. So I'm thinking, well, is this really going to happen? And then the backup plan. Alfie's just actually jumped back in the water. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can just tap on a bucket, a couple of chickens, and we can bring him up. Oh, yes, we offer them some food. Worst case scenario, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, nine yeah. all come out. And it's a warm day, so but they should be all right. <laughs> You've got a little girl coming from this side. Oh. I'll have to jump it. All of a sudden feel very small, and the only thing you've got is an even smaller stick. We've got Martha there. Yep. So just hang back a little. Remember, uh -huh. put the stick out as she comes. Yep. If we get him another two metres, we're all right. Sure. One, two, three. <laughs> you all right, Ed? Happy? Just tail. Yeah, mate, could you come and help, Chris? Yeah. Just put a bit of weight on that. Lizzie will watch you behind for any gators coming up. So we can just get him to open up a little bit. Come on, mate, open up. We've got the stick in there. Now, we get this pipe in. There's that beautiful moment when they've subdued Alfie, the pipe goes in, and then it's over to me. And there's just a few mils of PVC between me and those beautiful crunching alligator jaws. And that pipe's being tested. Well, it hasn't cracked yet. Now's going to be the test. I hope he's frightened. I am. Let's check your gag. Not that great, buddy. Danny has survived the night, 
after his second battle with a paralysis tick. But there are still worrying signs. Still not great. Tick paralysis can affect different dogs in different ways. His main problem was that he couldn't swallow. And if you can't swallow, then that means your food sort of just sits at the back of the throat and there's the risk that you can inhale it and that can cause a big infection in the lungs. Danny has had pneumonia before when, when he had tick paralysis and it took him over six weeks to recover from that, so we just don't want to go there again. Until Danny's swallow reflex is back to normal, the hungry puppy will stay on a drip and will not be allowed to eat or drink. I'll use the left arm so I can still write with it. With the right. On the banks of a lagoon surrounded by 30 alligators, it's Chris's moment of truth. The thing about an alligator is their jaws are made for crushing. They're very powerful, they're shorter, and they love to just clamp down. So this feeling is, it feels like Jeez, it's still, a bit of, still a bit of food there. Oh, that's the living that he just ate. <laughs> <laughs> to check Elfie hasn't swallowed a bottle, Chris must move his arm over the tongue, down the back of the throat and into the stomach. Oh, oh I just swallowed on my arm. Oh, that's a weird feeling. Oh, it's, it's amazing that with all that force, once you get past those jaws, it, it, everything's pretty relaxed until you get these occasional contractions that just clamp down your arm and try to force it right in there where they want it. Chris needs to move fast as the restless alligators begin to take an interest. What the hell was that? What the hell was that? Just nap there, all right. There's one, just one area right at the back that I really, I do want to have a feel before we're sure that he, he hasn't swallowed it. At the Australian Reptile Park, Chris is carrying out his daunting internal examination of Elfie after reports the gator had swallowed a bottle. Yeah, Martha's all right. She's predictable. She always charges. No. Oh, that's a good no, result anyway. you're clear, mate. I think you're clear. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. It's moments well, like know, these. You need to you know, I want to say thank you to you for calling me when you do. Yeah. <laughs> that's great, isn't it? Look, that's a great result for us. We're, we're pretty happy. I mean, we weren't certain if it was a bottle or not, but to have it clarified that it's not is just a bit of peace of mind. So we'll just jump up on three. One, two, three. Whilst it's a little bit overwhelming to get your hand right down to a gator's stomach, the reality of not doing it and leaving a bottle to go into the intestine and cause a potentially fatal blockage was even more scary. Now, are you salivating because you're starving? He says, please, I'm really hungry. Oh, I'm starving. Tick bite victim Danny is finally allowed to eat after fasting for 48 hours. One, one at a time. Wait, wait. No. Oh, you're starving. Lisa is now confident his swallow reflex is back to normal. That's it. You keep that down and you can go home. It's not going to have any more hair. I'll <laughs> shave it every week. No, you're not. <laughs> Rosaline is worried Danny's new haircut has made him look like a different breed. Yeah, short hair Labrador. <laughs> now, I have to put a sign up on his head when we go walking that he's a golden retriever. <laughs> I miss you too. He looks a bit like a Labrador, don't you think? Don't no? ever say that. Don't say that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just teasing. You're a golden retriever, aren't you? Danny's just gorgeous. Hopefully he'll be back for a visit for cuddles. No more ticks, and they're under strict instructions to check him every day. Bye. <laughs> See how you walk. As for the accident-prone Woody, he's also Woody. on the way home. I said walk, not run, Woody. Jeez. And for the first time, Chris can see just how he manages on three legs, a legacy of a Sorry. previous car accident. Now, Woody, we have a tip for the future. Doors. That's how you leave buildings, all right? Woody. 
might just recognise this place. Hey, hey, hey. Bit of a difference, huh? It's just relief and joy, knowing that, that everyone's going to be happy in the family that Woody survived, and he's just fantastic. You Thanks can see it, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's so good to finally see Woody running around on those three legs, almost as if nothing ever happened. It was touch and go there for a while, but in a way, his spirit got him into this, but it's also what got him out of it as well. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.